Well, hello folks, it's Peter Elgar from Brentwood, Essex. Look at this gear I was given by the sister of a camera club member from her deceased husband who died in 2019. Uh, together with a beat up Practica MTL5, a jammed up Pentax Zoom 60 with a film still inside and some Ilford chemicals that still work and seven rolls of out of date Kodak Gold 200 from 2003. That was a good year. Anyway, got loads of interesting stuff to show you. Uh, first of all, all this wiring, that is um, the power cable which came with it, a mains cable, but it also is a charging unit for the battery. So there's a, it came complete with a camera user guide, the PowerShot G5 Canon compact digital camera. It, loads of loads of it. Well, I, I have weighed him through, but I've managed to suss out most of the settings and I've used it. So I've got some pictures to show you. So it comes with a lithium battery like this. I've got two of these. And they go in this little compartment here and you have to be very careful because it's only a plastic hinge there's the battery and it comes it has a CF card which goes in here um, open pull it look at the instruct there's the CF card in there it came with a very very Poor CF car, but a camera club friend gave me an 8 gigabyte one, so I've got loads of stuff now. So, we'll go through it, and um, first of all, we'll show you the charging cable and the mains cable. This is it. Now, this is live. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't all go bang. I plugged it into the extension cord down below. Now, on the side here, you've got a little thing marked AV out, digital, and DC in. So we want the one marked DC direct current. Well, we can open it. Um, there's a little catch here. Well, would you believe it? Uh, that's so difficult to open when you're doing the video a bit. Oh, there we are. Now you've got to put it in the right one. There's there's a little li little lip here. And you've got to follow the little lip to make it so it goes in correctly. So you must make certain the camera's switched off. Push it in there. Right. Now, when the battery's charging, this little one flashes. Then it goes steady orange. And then it goes green. After two hours, it goes green. So it takes quite a long time to charge the battery fully. But it has gone green, so it's fully charged, but I've used it since. So now that is working off the mains, and I'm not using any battery power. So, first of all, there's a strange little button I saw on the front here. I thought, what's that? It's not a stop-down button, is it? I had a look at the book, and you press that, and lo and behold, you can unscrew that. It's not the lens comes off, it's like a lens cover. And that is for fitting auxiliary lenses. You can fit a wide angle and telephoto lens onto the front here. That's all it's for, so I don't have those. So we put that back. But it cleared up what that strange button was. Now here's a little flash. These are the little um, lights that come out to assist with your focusing and a uh, focusing beam there. It's five megapixels and the rest of it's on the top. Now it looks complicated but I managed to suss it all out and I'll show you some snaps taken with it. There's a hot shoe and it will take EX type Canon dedicated flashes um, so you can have an extra flash on the top. Now you switch it on with this control here. When you switch it to the right, to the red camera, it comes on to take pictures. You press it, and it's ready to take pictures. 
and some little information comes up in here I can take 999 pictures on that and then down below here is the exposure compensation set to naught and then I've got f2.8 set on the lens because I've got it on aperture values here so I've set 2.8 but then the rest of it you do in this little fold away screen now my camera club mate showed me that this twists around I, I didn't know that <laughs> he said yeah it twists around because I only saw it like that but he said no you can twist it pull it and twist it around and put it back and you can see what's happening <laughs> so to do things you switch on a you switch on a function button here and you on press display oh yeah I think it's come up look it's extremely small but at the bottom we have the ISO speed and I've got that set to 200 and to change it we press this little you know that's gone down to 50 now I've tried 50 the maximum you can have is 400 ASA so to set it you press set that's set to 200 then as you come down here you've got other things you've got effects you can have sepia and you've got black and white I took a picture on there which says black and white but it didn't come out black and white I was disappointed it came out colour still though you can have low sharpening or high sharpening, which I don't do. I do that in the computer. Bracketing. No, I don't want to bracket the exposures. This is the flash exposure compensation here. If you want to weaken the flash for filling, you weaken it there. So you go to a bit minus. M minus one stop now. Minus one stop. Flash exposure compensation. Now then I've set it to raw files. Yeah, that's on raw files. Or you can have it JPEGs. You can have it on super fine. Um, I, could, but I set it back to raw because I know what I'm doing. Super fine, large resolution, medium resolution, small resolution. Very, very poor that give you, but I've set it to raw files. And it gives you about 2,100 pixels by something. It's not a huge picture size. But there we are. It's only 5 megapixels. And then on the other ones you've got here, you can have manual focus if you like. I've never used that yet. You can press this. And you should be able to get change of white balance here. Oops. But it doesn't. I press it and it goes to ISO. I haven't found out how to do the white balance then. It should be up the top there. Um, this is the menu. You've got, you come down all these menus here. Flash sync, second curtain, slow sync, flash adjust, red eye, self timer. And you've got a neutral density filter for long exposures if you want to miss it off. Load of stuff in this. Load of stuff in this. Um, save current settings menu. Now I want to cancel. The load of different settings here. Anyway, I've, I've tried some things. You can have a theme start up, different colours, load of stuff here which I never use. So when you get a digital camera, you don't have to worry about all these things because you don't use half of them. Now, if you want to format the card, this is the dangerous one. You lose everything you format the card. I've cleaned it off, but there's things on there I don't want to clean off at the moment. So we won't format the card. We'll take it off and we'll take the display off. And up here, you've got a setting for flash. Now, the flash comes up in the top here. It's very small. I've got flashes on all the time for filling flash. That is, that is on all the time. This little square thing is the drive. I've got it on single shot drive. Then we've got this one that's red eye reduction on the flash if you want it. Then this is the 
this is the placing of your focusing point. Um, not certain when that one does. This is AV on aperture priority. And if I change that to manual, you should go to M for manual, manual exposure. Then you're going to have time values, TV now. You set your time values there. And you can set it to 1250, it's on 200 there. You turn a little wheel, it, it changes, look, it's at one, it goes to 1,000, 2,000th of a second it goes up to. I, I've never taken one at 2,000th. Now there's your time values, and it's got an F2 lens. It's a nice little lens, it's a 7.2, to 28.8 millimeter focal length and it's f2 to as you zoom it out goes down to f3 it doesn't keep it f2 i have taken some pictures at f2 and i've taken pictures at 50 asi and 400 it's a, if you use raw you don't get so much noise i've also used this macro setting here you press that and a little flower, little flower appears in the screen there, a little flower. Now that means it will focus down fairly closely. Let's see if we can take a snap. Now, we'll, we'll focus on that. Oh, the flash went off. That's overexposed, isn't it? <laughs> There's the picture. It overexposed because I had the flash set. Now, we can, if you want to see it, you can press this one towards the little blue sitting here and it goes green. And that is a picture you've just taken. A load of rubbish. So we can delete that. Press this one here. Erase. You say yes. You delete that. It says busy. And there's the last picture I took, which I can show you. That is on raw files, but you're actually looking at a JPEG. When you use raw, the picture you see in the back of your camera is actually a JPEG. These I've got prints of those. So we'll show you some results. Oh, that was that was that paddle was no good. That was out of focus. I remember. So we delete that. Yeah, we'll delete that rubbishy picture. That was a on a car and I use f2.8 so it's not absolutely sharp I took two of that macro setting some flowers that's macro setting a lot many on that you see so anyway we'll press this and it switches off the little lens goes back in now that is charging here we are it's charging your battery now so we'll show you some actual snaps taken with this Wonderful little machine. No use waffling on if you don't see any results. Now we don't want to knock anything on the floor. Be, be, be a bit careful. Right, here's some snaps now. This was taken my test subject, one of my local pubs, and I used a 49mm polarizer. I held it over the lens because you can't fit a screw into. That because there's no screw thread for filter, you have to hold it over, but that was with it. Now this one is a flash picture. And what I did, I had a Sunpack Auto 36 FD with a, and I put a wireless transmitter, a Yongyo in the top there, and it uh, held me flash off to the side with the receiver and it flashed. I set it to 200 shot speed the maximum flash synchronization speed on this camera is 250. And that came out well. And that is zoomed right out. That is the coat of arms of my town Brentwood. That was taken at f2.8. I've got because it's flat, you don't need in depth of field, you only need to focus on there. So I've got I've got quite a fast shutter speed. Here's a macro one. That's on flowers. It's bit overexposed on the video but that's quite good colour that was on the macro setting that was on 50 ASA because it was bright sunshine I tried 50 this is the famous seat in St Thomas's churchyard now what I do notice 
with this camera around here when you enlarge it up you get colour fringing on the whites with that lens this was taken f2.8 so the background a bit out of focus as I wanted it but around there there's some colour fringing now I've got a 5 megapixel Olympus E1 and that beats the Canon I'm afraid the lens and that beats it I don't get colour fringing with that 5 megapixel one but this one got some colour fringing and I think I can see some colour fringing down the side here purple colour fringing that is on the lens here's another one which is a very simple shot but it, it did well on flicker the load of views only a simple shot in Thomas's church but I'm looking at the sharpness here that's on 50 ISO quite a wide aperture and a fast speed but the bricks are fairly well resolved that was it I think that was at 2.8 as well the bricks are fairly well resolved anyway for a free gift not a bad little unit is it here we are I'm always pleased to receive any goodies and they all get used and I'm very grateful it keeps me alive as all my oncologists and surgeons have said after my latest two stays in hospital load of tests but well the old boy has survived another day so I hope you've enjoyed this quick little rundown on a 5 megapixel Canon PowerShot G5 and if you want to support my channel expenses Click on the link below where it says buy me a coffee. Because you don't buy me coffee, you actually pay me to buy some films and stuff. Alright, see you next time folks. Bye bye for now.